Bamboo's not the devil, are you? Where am I? Can you guess? Oh, well. <laughs> As you probably guessed from the beginning of this video, I got the train to Hadfield and I'm going to try and walk around all of the reservoirs. Something which I've not managed to do yet. I did it a long while ago on my bike and uh, I did actually take a few clips along the way but it's difficult as I've mentioned on the bike to record what you're doing. Um, so I didn't make a video of it um, and it took me quite a few hours just going around on my bike but that's mostly because of the terrain. Um, so here I am on the, uh, what's it called? Come on, you're meant to know these things. It's called the Longdon Dale, Longdon Dale, Long Dong, Long Dong, Long, Longdon Dale Trail, or something like that. And it follows the train line as it would have done from um, Hadfield over the Pennines and into Sheffield. Um, and if I make it as far as I want to go today, we'll actually see where the train used to go uh, through a tunnel which is still maintained under the Pennines. So let's see if we make it that far. <laughs> one long track basically where the train used to run um, I'm guessing that it was actually one of the cuts from Beeching um, one of the routes across the Pennines that, that Beeching cut in the what was it was it the 30s or the 60s I can't remember exactly there's reservoir I think that's reservoir number one could be wrong um, so I'm actually higher than I wouldn't would normally be I'd be over down there near that, that tree line near the water's edge probably uh, walking along and the beauty of doing it this way is that because it's such a long straight line I'm going to cut off a lot of the wiggly 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 jiggly bits um, down near the water's edge and uh, try and get the south side of the reservoirs done quicker uh, so that I can enjoy enjoy the other side. Rain's just trying to come down um, you can have a look at the skies, look, look at that. You can see the, the difference there between where I'm heading into, the blue sky and the fluffy clouds and the ominous grey ones that are trying to shower me now and again. Of course, uh, one of the great things about this trail being open up to um, public now, you know, the, the rail tracks have been removed. Um, there's still vestiges of a station a bit further on. Um, but this is literally just a track now for, I think, for a bridal, it's a bridal way for horses, for people, lots of people with dogs, people out uh, with the children, you know, it's a nice, easy uh, route. I could probably even push my mum along here most of the way. It's uh, wheelchair accessible. And it means that just ordinary folk now can get out and enjoy the and what it has to offer. And the, the beautiful skies that you can see behind me. Oh, welcome to the world. Shivering in the wind. Hello, Mr. Woodpitchy. What a lovely shot. How are you doing? You alright? Come here, five dogs. Just looking for some food. Maybe some over here. Plenty of bridges, probably farmers' bridges, going over the uh, this old tra rail track, and you can you can definitely see how it would have gone through this little cutting here. Uh, maybe this was a station once, because this is a raised platform that I'm walking on, 
and you can see down there where the tracks used to be is uh, two little rivers now, quite marshy. And you can just imagine as well, I mean, if you look up either side of me to the left and the right, you can see these are quite some banks. So this must have been a, a man-made ravine that the, uh, the navvies or whoever built the, um, the railway line in the first place must have had to etch out the landscape. All of this, and I bet it even wasn't even in operation, this line, for probably more than 100 years. You know, so many, uh, so many man hours and blood, sweat and tears have gone into building the um, rail network that we used to have across um, the UK. And then when you consider all of the canal system as well, there's thousands of man hours were spent on um, digging and pounds, you know, thousands of millions in, in today's money of pounds spent um, with this industrial um, engineering, if you like, to, uh, to etch course, courseways through the, the landscape, uh, especially the, the naturally hilly uh, mountainous terrain of, of uh, the middle of England, the Pennines and such. And uh, what an effort to go to. Uh, all for it to be just almost forgotten. So in a way, it is, it is quite fitting that, that now this little, you know, it's, it hasn't been completely wasted, shall we put it that way, because now people can use this for leisure. And uh, I've, I've passed dozens of people already, kids on bikes, people with prams, joggers, and people just enjoying a day out with the family. It's lovely, it's good to see. Um, so, bit boring but you know good to see and when I say boring I don't mean it's boring actually you know it's just because it's a train an old train line it just it's very straight and direct there's uh, there's not much variation in what's going on and um, you, you can't really wander off left or right into the trees there isn't really that much woodland or anything to look at um, but you know you're out in the countryside nonetheless a lovely little bench to sit on too. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, if only we could go flying off the edge. Deep clough. Footpaths everywhere. I wonder where that one leads to. My ex-girlfriend by the sound of it. myself saying that on every video so you must be getting tired of it too but I do seem to pick the good ones it's, it's lovely as well when what can sometimes look at a very dark ominous looking water like if you check out my video where I walked down the reservoirs when it was snowing I mean it was good fun in its own way to be in that storm but when you got the blue sky reflecting off the uh, Reservoirs, as a lot of lakes are they reservoirs, and uh, just I'm glad I took this top walk because the vista really opens out even more than it does you know, doing the, the one down below. And we can see we're coming up now to I think this might be the, the third reservoir out of five, was it? I think I counted last time. And also, um, I've got another mission. When I get to the tunnel that used to lead to Sheffield, um, but I'll reveal that a little bit later when I get there. Hats off, sun's coming out now. We've still got a lip in the air, it's still only spring, remember. Um, so when the wind doth blow, it gets uh, right in the nooks and crannies. But I'm going to stop on the lovely little bench here. And the one good thing about this uh, Longdendale Trail is there's bench after bench after bench, really good with lovely views as well. Um, so I'm going to sit here with this lovely backdrop and maybe even have just a little bit of tea as I uh, disrobe. Can't be a nice cup of tea.
by the way, guys, um, if anyone of you were interested, I have discovered the ultimate tea for flasks. What you need is a measuring jug, one bag of Yorkshire tea, and one bag of PG tips. Fill it to an inch of the top with hot water, bit of nice whole creamy milk. Perfect cuppa. Don't mind if I do. And look at that. Look at it. Beautiful. Ah, right, let's crack on. Are you ready? Come on then, let's go. Nice to see the gorse out as well. Hello gorse. Seem quite hardy these as uh, you often see it down by the, uh, the reservoirs even when it's not really, you know, it seems to out season most of the other wild flowers or plants. A shrub, I guess, isn't it? Gorse is a shrub. And if you watch one of my other videos, which I may or may not be able to find on a link, you'll be able to find out whether gorse actually does taste like coconut. What the bloomin' hell's that? Where is it? I've just realised, is uh, just getting my bearings, that's where you can see those cars, is that, that steep road that I sometimes walk across from Glossop to the reservoirs and then back to Hadfield. It's interesting, you know, when you, when you get a different perspective on things, see things from a different angle. And that's what life's all about, isn't it? Making sure you, you're not just um, blinkered and looking at things from, from one perspective. Uh, you know, literally and metaphorically, I guess. Um, everywhere you look in nature, there's lessons for us all. Is that a bit too philosophical? Who cares? Come on, you little slow coaches. I know it's a bit chilly, but your friend's back there already out in the open. Show your faces, come on. Just passing this post and I thought, I wonder what that is on top, it looks a bit weird. And I walked up a little bit closer, and a bit closer, and there we are, look at that. Someone's left a little pile of seeds for the wild birds, isn't that lovely? Ah. And there. And there. And in there. And there. Blimey. And in there, everyone. Wow. Silver birch really is beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's not just silver or white. It's so many, so many different colors of tarnished browns and reds and yellows. And uh, the green as well on this trunk, it's just lovely with the, uh, how do you say it, Bol Balka, Balka, um, in the background. And then as we just slide gently to the right, you can see that little fluffy white bit. Do you know what it is? Actually, where we have a look there, and it goes into focus, the beauty of this phone. And then the zoom in, you can see the water just cascading down on the man-made waterfall from one reservoir to the next. And if you listen carefully, you can probably hear it too. Bloody hell, I've got a whole coach load coming towards me. Oh, my neck. I would, I would go through. Is that it? No, there's more. Yeah. Right. That must be it now. 
yeah, I think that's it. Now, I've seen such a coach load in the middle of nowhere. Uh, maybe it's come some kind of walking group. He's good at what he does. Oh no, there's always two strugglers. And while the sun may be shining brightly through the blue azure sky, we only have to glance over our shoulder and look at the ominous grey lump that's itching itself over the top of that hill. Please, please go away. Look at it, it's ominously dark. And that big lump of it there as well. It's kind of blowing towards Sheffield, so I think it's, uh, I might just get away with it. So, uh, where am I going? Well, it's kind of seems to join the road now, but I do seem to remember from the last time on my bike that you can actually uh, follow it. Maybe a little bit higher up. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna have to have a look. I'll go along the road for now and uh, see where it takes me. It, it seems to be pretty well signposted if anyone does come along and do it themselves. Um, having said that, I do remember getting a little bit lost last time. Yeah, so if you do come that way, this way, you can see that signpost just over mid right of the screen there, but I was looking at just now. And then you have to turn back along the road a little bit, which I'm going down now, and then rejoin the pathway the other side. Um, and that's where it then continues safely away from the road because it is a it's a hairpin road and uh, I wouldn't want you to get run over and it really is quite ancient some of this as well look at this uh, is that all intentional do you think I think that's intentional so that um, humans can get through with sheep because you can see another one up there look. just the other side and uh, the, the the way the track came obviously down here isn't it really is marshy now lovely lovely to see that all this dry stone walling still exists and uh, is holding up even till today i wonder though do you think uh, do you think they have to maintain it do you think it's something that needs constant maintenance or is it really just holding up to the test of time Yes, yes, tree. Yes, yes. I, I understand. I know, I know. But I think we ought to get to the root of the problem. Yeah, but I'm really sad. Look at my sad face. Oh, and my little antennas. Looks like a bloody giraffe tree. Well, after a couple of miles of beautiful weather and uh, stripping almost to the waist, those clouds overhead uh, bringing a nice not nice nasty icy cold wind with them so i think i'm gonna have to change into my uh warmer stuff oh nearly that's better lovely little brook down there as well uh, obviously feeding into the reservoir um, I didn't realize there was more than one river obviously there's streams uh, that looks like a more substantial river um, that feeds into the reservoirs so I wonder what that one's called because the other one's called the Ethelow uh, I'll have to see if I can find out if this one has a name I don't think you'd want to wild camp down there though even though it looks more remote there's little nooks and crannies up the valley um, none of it looks particularly flat so the, uh, the wind really is howling and blowing that cloud over into Sheffield which is a good thing um, 
almost right over my shoulder. The uh, blue sky seems to be prevailing up behind me. And what a beautiful sight it is, all those uh, cumulus and clouds going quickly across the sky. Uh, bench here, I might just have another sip of tea while I put this on there. Uh, bit of a time lapse. When you've got a map, hey. Eh? Uh, so the one thing it doesn't tell us is you are here. Um, but you can see the extent of the reservoirs there. And uh, oh yeah, it does look the red yellow. The red yellow thing just there says you are here. So that's where we are. So we're just coming up to the, the road that goes across between. Uh, the fourth and fifth reservoirs, the last reservoir, and um, so probably just still about a third of the way along the south side to go. Uh, so let's get plodding. This looks interesting, doesn't it? Some sort of little pond that's been formed here, both sides of this channel, which is uh, obviously man made but possibly just uh, conveying water down from the hills from a natural stream, disappearing under our feet. to go down to the reservoirs below and there must be little natural springs here as well because the water here is from the little pond is cascading down into it and the other side as well so there must be natural springs along this railway route um because that's quite a lot of water that's pumping down there very interesting hey guys who are you don't seem to remember who you are, to be honest with you. You're like by a little stream, it looks dandelion family, and these strange little pointy leaves. Mum? This is where the road bends round and joins the other side, I think. The road doesn't continue down on the south side to the uh, tunnel. Quite a nice little quaint chapel over there in the distance. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I remember this little road that joins uh, joins up over there. And uh, this is the fifth and final reservoir ahead of me. I'd forgotten quite how far it is, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if I really want to go right to the end. I'm going to have to check my map because uh, I came on my bike, you see. So it's it's quite a lot more, quite a lot more distance than I remember it being. And uh, I've got to walk all the way back again yet. We'll see. I can see you, Mr. Pheasant. Hello, I can see you. Nice to see you. Beautiful colours. I'm not a pheasant plucker. I'm a pheasant plucker's mate. I'm only plucking pheasants because they're pleasant. No, that's wrong. This really is the, uh, the longest reservoir. I think we're about halfway along it now and uh, See that little bridge that I, uh, I remember going over it last time over there in the distance and I'm sure the archways were, I'm sure the water level was a lot lower than that. It, it looked quite high there, doesn't it? Up to the arches. Surely nearly at the end. If this is uh, the original track bed, then I've been surprised at some of the steep angles that the trains have taken. I mean, maybe it was only steam trains that came down here but, and it, it probably doesn't pick it up on the camera but this is quite a sharp s-bend uh, so they I would either have to take it really slow or uh, or they were slow trains anyway I think we're nearly there now I do remember uh, this big long line of humongous electricity pylons which we can see um, and the river was is just nestles just down to the left of them. Uh, the river Ethro, of course, which feeds into the reservoirs and then continues off the other side through Hadfield and um, Broadbottom, where I've done so many of my other videos. Uh, so this is this is where they got to with the what is now the Longdendale Trail um, with the rail line. 
and I guess it was a it took a lot of decisions to make finalize on the, on this route um, with the least amount of tunnel digging um, that we'll come to in a minute and um, through to the other side of the Pennines um, why they then abandoned it I don't know I'll have to find out Oh, I've been walking, I think, roughly, uh, I think about three hours I've been walking now. Um, so, and sunset is at eight o'clock-ish, just before, um, and it's now coming up to four o'clock. So I think I've got, still got plenty of time, um, even if it takes me slightly longer on the other side, on the north side of the reservoirs, um, to walk back to Hadfield and then hopefully still be able to get a train um, and not the stupid replacement bus services. Um, so, good timing, I think, good timing. Um, if I wasn't sure, I could obviously, I could walk straight back just the way I've come, but it's, a, it's, it's pleasant, it's pleasant, but it's a tedious long line, straight line, almost. Um, a lot of the time, not a lot to see. That really is the mother of all. Well, it looks like a substation coupled with the first in a long line of those pylons. And uh, that really does look mean. Uh, it really does mean business. Look at the size of it. And uh, well and truly safeguarded and fenced off and warning signs and cameras and all sorts. I'm not surprised. And it does make me wonder because with um, the river is just over there the other side of that fence and if we look over into the distance there um you can see where the train line where we'll go in a minute um used to then go through the tunnel under the pennines and i it does make me wonder whether um the electricity was fed through from sheffield or to sheffield um via this substation and, and using the tunnel to do that here indeed is uh, the end of the train line before it went into into the tunnel ahead look um, you can still see the platform uh, this was called Woodhead train station um, God knows how many people would have actually got on and off here uh, I don't know if, if there's actually that many people living in the local area um, although you know they did seem to in the past but stations down just just if there was even a small community and you just just over the, to the right of that platform there you can see the chimneys of a couple of houses um but yeah this is the woodhead tunnel um i think the two little tiny um cream colored tunnels bricked up ones to the left hand side um were just access tunnels and emergency routes um and there's the, the main tunnel ahead so platform on the right, platform on the left, and then the train would, would have continued straight through the, through the hillside. And uh, what's very pleasant here is the site of the SLO before it joins the reservoirs. Um, I imagine it would have continued to look like this all the way through the valley before the reservoirs were built. And uh, what a lovely, pleasant, rocky, fast flowing, um, full of energy river this is and uh, I'm not going to be able to stay here long to enjoy it. can't see anything through that second gate all I can see is just the the tunnel disappearing off within within five meters into dark nothingness and there's a nice echo here too 
Hello. <laughs> so there we go. Let's see if um, the wide angle will give us a better look outside of the tunnel. Oh yeah, there you go. Amazing. I'm glad I made it all this way. Piece of history now gone. And it makes you wonder why they keep this tunnel not even, you know, they haven't filled it in or blocked it up. What purpose does it serve? Do you think maybe one day they're in intending to use it again? Who knows? So we've come along the Trans Pennine Trail West Hadfield 10k. So I've done about seven miles, six and a half miles. Um, and it continues east to Dunford Bridge, which I've never been that way, so I will have to do that one day. This little uh, making my way back now along still along the south side of the reservoirs or the river at least for now um, I do seem to remember just after this pylon on this little side track that leads down to the reservoir uh, the river um, that uh, it, I mean, it's obviously this this path is obviously um, a track so that people can come along and service the pylons if necessary I imagine anyway um, but I do think it's a public footpath as well uh, that leads down to the river and and supposedly uh, crosses the river and joins the road so you can see with the cars up there on the right hand side um, and last time I came down here on my bike I, I did cross the river to be shoes and tox off and uh, cross the river with my bike. Um, I don't know if I've still got that bit of footage to be honest with you. I guess sometimes <coughs> you've just got to be unconventional. Oh. And it is going to be bitingly cold. So this is going to be the, the make or break when I get down here as to whether I, I do the same again and cross, cross the river so if it's safe enough and not too cold to do it um, but it is no more than a, a ford if you like 
and we have had some rain recently so the river might just be too full for me to safely uh, negotiate the, the slippery rocks um, and if that is the case then I'm gonna um, stay on the south side and across at the next uh, opportunity where that road bent round that we saw earlier. This is the very place, this is the very place where I cross with my bike up over to the other side and it is a lot deeper today than it than it was on that occasion. I think it was summer, um, very fast flowing, very slippery rocks. Um, my heart is telling me that I shouldn't bother and that I should find an alternative route but I will come back here at some point, maybe in the summer again when the the water will just be a couple of degrees warmer because I even then I remember I got to the other side and my my feet were blocks of ice absolute blocks of ice I don't think there's a path down there that will be any better than this and even here where there's a obviously a man-made weir and the water is very shallow as it drip, drops over you can see the speed that it's going and it would only take one slip and for me to break my ankle or something or even sprain it and fall into the water I'd be dead so I'm not gonna bother I'm gonna be sensible do the safe thing and make my way back up to the path it's a shame I'd love to have crossed it but um, I'm just not gonna take the risk and um, maybe if I came back here with another person or um, or something who knows but uh, or a, just a, a nice long plank that would do the trick wouldn't it so decided not to do it down there I will come back and do it again one day maybe I'll find a plank one day and drag it down there um, and the, one of the main reasons I wanted to get across to the other side where you could see just the other side of the river there's a, a large flat expanse of land um, and I was thinking that it would be an ideal place to go and do my first wild camp um, down there just on the other side of the of the uh, SMO um, but on second thoughts it does look quite overgrown it's gonna get even more overgrown as the uh, as the year progresses uh, so maybe it's not such a good idea after all um, no probably not uh, you know what with we only have one poisonous snake in the UK that's, uh, well, venomous, should I say, and that's uh, the adder. Um, but then you've got to think of ticks and other, all sorts of other biting insects that live near water. Um, maybe it's not such a, a good idea to start with. Or maybe I'm just trying to, you know, dodge the issue and we'll never get around to wild camping. Who knows? For now, though, um, I'm not going to do it. And the other thing is, I am also wary that, as you can see, we are on a, a huge um, electricity pylon line through the valley here and um, spending a whole night under one of those uh, that they have uh, been, um, there have been studies done that, that do show that they, they can cause cancer and stuff like that for people that live nearby them. So maybe not such a good idea. The uh, microphone will pick it up, but right over there you can see that promontory uh, in the reservoir. That spit of um, sand just sticking out, and it's all along the coastline there, if that's what you would call it, are thousands of seagulls of some kind. I'm guessing it's uh, almost roosting time, and they're all just squawking and fighting for the best place really is ginormous this reservoir as well um that was where i was over by that pylon over there and that's where the reservoir ends and the river enters it and uh quite some way away that is um i think i'm nearly through with this the, the, the last and the biggest of the reservoirs now though as I zoom out, you can just just see just how far away, I've, how far I've come. Hello, you okay? <laughs> and uh, I think I'm nearly at the road that joins across between this reservoir and the next one down now. So hopefully within the next five, 10 minutes, I'll be crossing over, getting a little bit of different scenery 
other than this uh, monotonous path. Rest in peace, my friend. executive decision um, to speak when cars are going past. No, I made an executive decision um, where the road crossed the, the reservoirs there to, to actually stay on the road. Um, up there, somewhere up the hill, is uh, the old railway line, the path that I came on to start with. So I thought just for a bit of change of scenery, um, change of angle, um, it obviously it comes with its own hazards of having to dodge cars um, but I'm, I'm being as safe as I can and uh, stepping to one side like now when, when a car comes past as if by magic so yeah and I'm glad I did because it's added a bit of variety um, to what would otherwise just be a return along the same path I came down really is uh, quite impressive some of the views that you get um, the, the humongously tall pine trees um, I don't know what they are, are the Scots fir maybe um, you know over this very steep edge down into the uh, the offshoot of the reservoir down there and uh, with that gorgeous scenery behind that etching out of the, the landscape you know a mile away into the distance uh, it's just breathtaking and right in the centre of the screen there is a very gothic looking building as well which um, I'll probably zoom in on just so you can have a look yeah just the majesty of these I mean they're not thin trunks either you know they're a good medium sized oak thick these these trees they, they start way below where I can see down the bank and you just keep tilting your head up and up and up and up and it's just they're just never ending and most of the canopy is right at the top almost like they just gotta keep going higher just to fight for that bit of sunlight for their leaves that's dinner sorted rest in peace my friend Yeah, small bosoms ahead. I think if I'm not mistaken, that's a, a great crested grebe. No, no, I can't be right. Yeah, maybe it is. I think maybe it is. Because this, my initial thought was that over there in the distance behind, you can see a beautiful male, beautiful male pheasant. But the, the female is much closer to me and it's still much smaller, so um, I'm guessing that's a great crested grebe. And a uh, lovely shot in the sunlight of these, uh, these sheep grazing on the brow of the hill. Welcome to Sail Glossop Glossop Sailing Club. Well, put a lot of thought into that name, didn't they? And I did see a few people. Uh, is it windsurfing today on on the river on the uh, reservoir? I think there's maybe still a few doing it now. Nobody out on boots, boats, boots, boats. God, I can't talk. Shut up, Peter. One thing that does puzzle me is the, the number of these man-made culverts that you can see, um, where they're obviously containing. what used to be a stream or a small river that ran down into the, the reservoir or into the, fed into the Atho to start with, I guess. This is, you know, quite a full one. 
and yet they went to all that effort to I'm, I'm oh, I suppose yeah maybe now I think about it if you look up ahead you can see the tunnel and above the tunnel you can see the, uh, the Longdendale Trail which used to be a railway line so obviously they had to build up a bank for the rail line to go across so that it stayed so it stayed level I guess as far as it, as much as it could and therefore the stream had to be culverted underneath it that that makes more sense and I suppose they, they may as well while they're at it culvert it all the, way, all the way down to the reservoir so that it doesn't shift over the course of time maybe it's interesting trying to work out these historical industrial the, the reasoning behind why they did things Martin Zero would love it. Oh, finally made it. That was uh, dodging the cars and all that sort of business along the main road. As, as I said before, was the drawback of coming that route. I did get a nice alternative perspective on the way back, uh, but it really is a treacherous road that, and one loved by people that speed that business. Uh, here is where I jumped over the, the wall earlier to join onto the uh, Transpennine Trail um, to take me away from the road. That's the way it continues. So I came Pennine Way, I came, I came from down there, uh, which again continues now to follow the, the train line, the old train line back to Hadfield. Uh, but for a bit more of an alternative route back, I've decided I'm not going to go over the other side of the reservoirs today. That's going to add an extra mile that I just haven't got in me, to be honest with you. As you can tell, my voice is croaky. I'm going to stop for a drink soon and uh, refresh myself before this last leg home. A leg that I'm more familiar with and uh, the path that follows the Pennine Way, actually, uh, the, for, to start with and then it follows the south of the reservoirs um, back back to Hadfield. So that's what I'm gonna do. And isn't it gorgeous now that, that we've reached that bewitching hour, or the bewitching hour is where the sun's starting to dip on the horizon and we get that gorgeous glowing, um, almost autumnal uh, evening light, beautiful. Yeah, I know it's spring, but you know what I mean when I say autumnal. Oh, and it's so nice to be coming down this little bit here, uh, this track, and not having to dodge the cars. Blimey, that's even, you know, when there's hardly any verge as well, and you've got cars coming towards you, cars going the other way, you don't know which side of the road to go on. You're meant to go on the right-hand side, aren't you, with the cars coming towards you, but then you've got so many twists and turns and, and hills where they can't see you coming. Um, sometimes there's no verge at all. Yeah, I know, I'm moaning, I'm ha having a lovely day out and I shouldn't be moaning, but just car, bloody hell. Some of these country lanes, I'm turning into Victor Meldrew. never been up that little bit but I've just realised it must just join on to the uh, Longdendale Trail and I, I really don't want to do any of that again. This is a longer route staying down by the reservoirs but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it interesting and uh, <coughs> hopefully sit down near the water and have my final break and uh, it's only half past six, sun goes down around eight o'clock so I've got an hour and a half and there's plenty of trains once in a, every hour I think back to Manchester so I probably even have time for a pint in the pub Palatine I think it's called Robinson's house always a very nice pint in there always fascinates me as well this sinkhole what a bit of engineering that must have taken to uh, <clears throat> to include such a huge plug hole basically 
them in the reservoir. I guess it's for overflow and uh, just provides a, a steady trickle of water down down into the next one. lovely horses in or possibly one pony over to the left there and, and a, a very grand stallion I think probably over black black horse over to the right there with the coat on uh, they looked absolutely miserable last time uh, when I did my, one of my other videos walking down here cold windy rainy oh, look there's a nice hello Mr Pheasant posing for us as well there you go. Oh, finally on this lovely little lane that I love so much. Um, partly because it's, uh, well, it's a untouched lane, just just rubble. But the the glowing moss on both sides, walls both sides, is just it's just enchanting. And then when we get round the corner in a minute. Um, you can see the, um, it's just a beautiful alleyway of trees overhanging what was probably a very ancient lane, in fact. And uh, let's just pop ourselves over that hump and have a look. It's even uh, more magical with the, the setting sun glinting between the trees. And you can just imagine I mean, it's you can almost imagine like a, a young lad with a flat cap pushing a, a trolley with some bread on it, you know, like a Hovis advert. Uh, if you're not from England, go and Google it. Go and Google the old fashioned Hovis advert. And you can you just feel like you're going back in time to, you know, when the, the, the postman would be walking down here and the milk one would be, uh, you know, with collecting churns of milk from the local farm and uh, horse and cart you know it is it's just lovely it's it's almost like going back in time and it's a shame when you get the other end to Hadfield and uh, and you realize that the uh, the dream has broken <laughs> and boy I'm quite glad to be honest with you because um, I've walked quite a long way uh, is one thing and my old Scarpa walking shoes that I've had for so many years are probably wearing a little bit thin on the bottom and with all this uh, pebbly material that most of the path has consisted of so far it's uh, the undersides of my feet are a little sore to say the least um, so I could do with a new pair of shoes and probably in the meantime a new pair of insoles to be honest with you so I'm glad that I've only got this probably the shortest reservoir left to do uh, just this little bit of path and then it drops down um, next to the water's edge um, there is one more path that I want to explore though that might take me up to the station a bit quicker um, rather than going through all the, the bottom of Hadfield near Tin Twistle. So I'll see, see if um, I can find it and cut my journey a little bit short because I'm, to be honest with you, I'm looking forward to a pint. And uh, I think, um, I say to be honest with you, um, probably a little too often to be honest with you. 
grateful, I suppose, as I near my journey's end. It's only uh, left for me to say thanks for staying so long, if you did watch it till this far, on my little um, jaunt down the Longdendale Trail and the Woodhead Pass reservoirs um, by Hadfield. From Hadfield to Hadfield. So thanks for joining me. Um, give it a like if you enjoyed it and give it a dislike if you didn't. Um, doesn't make any difference. Um, it's still recognised by YouTube. Um, if you have any comments, put them down below. I'm always keen to learn how I can improve things or if you've got anything interesting to say about the places that I've been to um, or if you've been on, to, on a similar walk yourself. And uh, I'm looking forward to that pint. So if I don't speak to you again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I think maybe tomorrow I'm going to go and... Um, if, I, if my feet are up to it, I'm going to do the reverse of what I've done several times, which is the um, Whaley Bridge to Buxton that I've done the other way around quite a few times. So if it's a nice enough day, then that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, and uh, but I might need a, a new pair of feet to do it. So see you soon. Take care. Love you loads. Bye. Last little brook of the day. And... Uh, I've come to this bit which uh, I do recognise, I usually go through this uh, gap in the wall there down to the water's edge as you can see and follow the reservoir around but it does, it does dock it round to the right and it's, I might save my time by going up here or I might, it might be a, a wild goose chase, who knows, so you never know unless you try something new. I'm going to make my way up this very ancient footpath here and uh, see if it gets me to the station quicker. Well, if I'm honest, the pub. Right, so I think the cutting across this field here must take me up to Hadfield to the car park where the, uh, the beginning of the Longdendale Trail is. And I'm guessing that this one here is just a, a higher version of the one that skirts the, the uh, reservoir. So I'm gonna go this way, one more style. big already aren't they it's only it doesn't take them long just a couple of weeks and they're already putting on quite a bit of weight totally oblivious look munching on the grass they'll go run into mum as soon as i walk up there which one's mum i'm guessing that one over there Skittish as the others. Hello. And you lovely. Got a bit of confidence, eh, now? Oh, look at them. Sheep really are lovely. I said that in a previous video, and people always laugh at me, don't they? But they really are lovely animals. Those houses over there really do, as they're setting in the uh, sun, get the angle right, Peter. Uh, yeah, I just over my uh, right shoulder there. It reminds me of Royce and Vasey, which of course was set in um, Hadfield. You know, the um, League of Gentlemen series, TV series. Um, quite funny, very dark humour, if you haven't seen it or if you're in a different country. Uh, but yeah. 
sun and the slight haze and the very remote cold looking houses. Although they're probably very cozy and got fires on inside and stuff. And one last look at the gorgeous vista that has been my uh, my gift today on this amazing walk. Thank you. lovely little bridge which I've just discovered which joins me up back uh, with the Longdendale Trail right near the beginning and uh, it will take me out obviously near the station because it was a continuation of that track at one point and uh, so I'll make my way back down there for the last little bit as my heart is warmed by the gorgeous sunset that's breaking itself over the horizon like a runny yolk it's very peaceful along here. You can see why people come for evening strolls, evening walks with a dog or just with a loved one. Uh, I mean, especially with the, the sun shining as it is, uh, lighting everything up. And the, the overhang of the trees. Um, it's quite a cosy little sort of walk, walkway. Give a nice pint of uh, golden pale real ale of some kind now. And, uh, and just rest my feet for a minute. It's been a long old trek. But very satisfying. Guys, get out into the countryside. It's absolutely magical.